I start by greeting everyone. My name is Samuel Mbogwa, and I'm the one who will be taking you through quantitative techniques. Now, quantitative techniques in the business world, basically, these are mathematical tools. And this is the industrial context. I'm trying to bring you now closer home. So when we talk of the quantitative techniques in the business world, these are the mathematical tools that are useful in the analysis of business and economic problems. And the subject or the unit is so diverse, but we are going to restrict ourselves on what I've presented. This will be our course outline. So we'll be looking at the calculus and calculus basically entails differentiation and integration. We'll be looking at the application of both differentiation and integration. Then we look at the rules. Then from there, we'll go to the matrices and how they are applied in business cases. Then we'll go to the Markovian process and ultimately close with input and output analysis. Uh, why? why quantitative techniques? Now we know that mathematics is logical and precise and it is applied in all measurable phenomena. And when we talk of a business case, businesses will be interested in several attributes, output, revenue, if there are any commissions that need to be paid, fixed cost and the variable cost, also marginal cost, and also profits. So the rationale of quantitative techniques, management needs to be able to influence factors which can be manipulated or controlled to achieve the objectives. And these objectives could be varied dependent on the kind of the manager that we are talking about. For instance, the sales manager will be interested in the sales level. And sales level could be determined by sales function. And the, the, the sales function, which are determinants, such as level of advertising, for instance, if you advertise, sales could go up. If the prices are favorable as compared to the competitors in the industry, this might result into more revenue, et cetera, et cetera. We are looking at the all management will be interested in the optimization theory. That is maximizing or minimizing some measures of revenue or cost. And this is where now the quantitative techniques or methods comes in because we need to do some mathematical analysis. For instance, to maximize revenue, uh, to, to on, on maximization, we'll be looking at the revenue, profits, might be looking at the productivity of the employees. The HR will be looking, the HR manager will be looking at the motivation, are they motivated? So that they give the organization the uh, best or optimal. On the uh, minimization, the management will be concerned on minimizing costs, reducing the risks, uh, trying to address the issues of fatigue, maybe lateness at work, ETC, and also trying to minimize on idle time. So mathematical analysis helps in all these marginal analysis. So we'll be looking at the conversion of marginal function to total function. And there are drawbacks because every other technique that is used have, has its own weaknesses. And the drawbacks are quantitative uh, techniques are not applicable to non-measurable phenomena. And that's the challenge. So even if such a factor is so crucial, the success of the organization, it will be very hard for the manager to quantify if it is not measurable. Uh, a good example is motivation, let's say. 
or fatigue? How do you measure the level of fatigue? So I'm trying to give just an example of what is not quantifiable or what cannot be measured and therefore cannot be analyzed. So very quickly into our first topic, which is calculus. Uh, let me share calculus. And I know that this is not the first time that you are coming across this word, calculus. Some of you might have even covered these are the uh, other levels of education. And the objective of taking these, this particular topic will be trying to solve the business problems and to distinguish between the differentiation and integration. And then we'll be able to calculate or interpret the slope or gradient of a line. So by definition, uh, calculus is concerned with mathematical analysis. And we've all agreed that quantitative techniques will be involving the mathematical tools. So calculus is concerned with mathematical analysis of change or movement. And as I had indicated earlier, the two basic operations that take place in calculus are differentiation and integration. And one is converse of the other. Uh, so these two basic operations are the reverse of one another just like addition is the reverse of subtraction and multiplication is the reverse of division. So calculus in business, often we may be interested in the optimization or the maximization of revenue, the profit or the productivity as we minimize the cost or wastages. Also calculus will be used in the uh, calculation of the, all the, the marginal analysis. So it'll be looking at the change of marginal cost to the total cost, marginal profit to the total profit, uh, marginal revenue to the total revenue, et cetera, et cetera. Um, originally, these or calculus, I should have mentioned this. If we recall uh, Isaac Newton, Isaac Newton used to solve a lot of uh, problems in physics and his basis was calculus. We also had a German by the name Wilhelm Godfrey. And this was in 17th century. So you can imagine when calculus was invested. Uh, invented and this uh, German used this uh, technique to solve problems in the astronomy. Of course, those people who are in the scientific world or what you call STEM, science, technology, and the mathematical field, they'll be prone to doing validated tests, and that's how they came up with calculus. So we'll start with differentiation. And differentiation is concerned with the rate of change. And the examples of the rate of change uh, in business uh, could be, we could be looking into profit with respect to output. For example, I've indicated, uh, I, had, I had mentioned, how does how does advertisement impact on the profits or the sales that we do in the business? Then production with respect to hours work. Now, do we say that if employees work more, that they are going to be productive? That is what we call quality time. 
or if we take it from the uh, machinery perspective, of course, we know that an efficient or very effective machine, the more the hours, the more the productivity or the more the production and vice versa. Then revenue could be taken with respect to the advertising levels. We could take savings with respect to income levels and this can be quantified. For instance, uh, there is a tendency of people thinking that the more salary that you earn, the better life or the lifestyle that you live. But it could be converse. You'll find that those people who seem to earn less or meager salary, they are the very people who will be on the front line in saving. So that now demystifies the income levels. Are you getting profit? would be taken with respect to output ETC, ETC. Now, when we are talking of the rate of change, we are talking of gradient, mathematically speaking. For instance, I've, uh, I've indicated, uh, I've given an example of uh, two linear functions. The first one is Y is equals to four plus three X. And then we have the second equation is y is equal to negative 1 plus 3x. Now, considering these linear functions, we can get the values of y. If we substitute the values of x, and in this case, we have negative 1, then at this point, y will be one. If we substitute with zero, the value of y will be four. If we substitute with one, that will be four plus three, it will be seven. When we substitute it with two, that will be 10, right? If we substitute it with three, we will get 13, right? If we substitute it with, sorry, if we substitute it with 13 canon, what is not happening? I have it there. So if I substitute, x values with 4, that will be 3 multiplied by 4, 12. 12 plus 4 will be 17. So there we are. Then we go to the values of, for the function of y is equal to negative 1 plus 3x. Uh, so if we substitute with negative 1, we are going to get negative 4. If we substitute with zero, we are going to get negative one. If we substitute with the two, we'll get two. If we substitute the values of X with three, what is not happening? something is amiss here. So if we substitute with one, that's when we are getting two. One, we are getting two. Then we substitute for the values of two, we are getting five. Then three, we will get eight. And then four, that will be 11, right? So if you were to place this information on a Cartesian plane, we result into a linear functions, two linear functions, yeah? And I presented this. 
for those who have graph books, you can illustrate this. And this is how, if we put it on a scatter graph, this is the, this is the linear functions for y is equals to four plus three x and y is equals to negative one plus three. So the observation here is, you can see the two lines are parallel. In other words, we are trying to say that the rate of change of y with respect to x for the two, for the two linear function is the same. In other words, uh, as x changes by one unit, uh, can see. So we can take, we can take, we can go back to our, for instance, we took two points or two coordinates for instance, and you want to check the change of y over change of x. So when we take off, we, we talk of, we can take two, for example, we can take this coordinate. Uh, when x is one, y is equals to seven. And then we can take it when, let's say x is negative one, y is equals to one. So our change in y will be seven minus one, which is six, then our change in X will be one minus one. But this one is in bracket, it's supposed to be very keen. So one minus minus one is equals to two. In other words, we are talking of six, which was the change in Y, seven minus one divided by two, which is three. So we can easily say, and this way I was coming, that the rate of change if we go to the to the to the second slope and you want to to the second function and you want to get the change you can take any two we can say 11 minus 5 that will give us 11 minus 5 will give us 6 then you have 4 minus 2 will give us 2 in other words we are saying the change in y over the change in x for the two linear function is the same. And that's why we are getting the same slope. Yeah. So this is what I was trying to demonstrate. So our change, if we take any two coordinates on the, on the two functions, linear functions that you've been given, we can say that in both cases, when x changes by one unit, y is changing by three units. Yeah, six divided by two is three. So when X changes by one unit, our Y is changing by three units. And this sign is called Delta. So when we are talking of the change in Y over change in X, we are talking of Delta Y over Delta X. Later on, we'll be using D when we come to the differentiation, we'll be using the change in Y as DY over dx or over change of x. Let me not preempt will be coming there. So in other words, we are saying that the change in y over change in x give us the slope of a linear function. And that is the gradient. When we are talking of the slope, the way it is slanting. And you can easily tell even without the, 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 the absolute figure. Uh, for instance, if we plot any linear function and we are getting a slope that is sloping, now the change in Y, you can see what is happening. So our line is going down. In other words, we are saying that our gradient is negative. So when the figure of B in the equation of, linear equations are normally written in this form, Y is equal to A plus BX. Now we say B here is the slope. Are we together? And our A is the Y intercept. Are we there? So in other words, we are trying to say for the slope of a linear function, when our B is negative or is less than zero, it shows that X is increasing when Y is decreasing. We are, our point zero is here. So you can see our X are increasing 
but our y is decreasing. So this slope gives us a negative gradient. Now we have a positive one, like the one that you've just had. So in this case, we can say that, or we can see that our x is increasing and linearly our y is also increasing. In other words, our gradient is greater than zero. Now, when the slope is zero, or when our b is equal to zero, we can see our x is increasing, but y does not change, right? And then on the converse, when our y is infinity, so the slope cannot be identified. Even when x is not changing, y is still increasing. Are we there? So these are situations when our gradient is infinite. I've given an exercise there. You can adopt it. If you have any question related to what I've taught, don't shy away from asking in the portal. And I want people to respond to these questions. If you go to the portal, I have given two activities. One activity is under the quiz and the other activity is under the, the forum. Kindly respond because as indicated in our, if I take you back, let me show you how you can easily score an A in this unit. Uh, you can see what I've indicated there. We are going to have submitted assignment, which will carry five marks. I have quiz and discussion, which is carrying five marks. We are going to have submitted assignment again, which will carry 10 marks. Now this one are assignments that will be submitted via the portal. So you can see the quizzes and discussions. What I needed to portray is that they are commanding a mark. So don't lose your mark. So if you're able to scoop everything here, then you get your cuts and you get your assignment. By the time you are going to the exam, you'll already have moved from the E mark. Cuts will give me 30. So in the exam, even if you are so careless, you will be able to get at least 10. For quantitative techniques, we mark entries. So you can easily scoop mark. Of course, there are those questions that will be needing you to explain, differentiate, etc, etc. Uh, so kindly do that or attempt that. In summary, you've introduced calculus and you say that these are mathematical analysis of change. And you have studied the differences between the differentiation and the integration. And you said that they are reverse of each other, just like subtraction versus addition or division versus multiplication. And you've also learned how to calculate the slope of the straight line. In our next lecture, we will explore how to determine the slopes of the nonlinear functions. Yeah. If you have any question, I've said you ask in the portal, it will be responded. My classes will be starting exactly five minutes after the time that you've indicated in the link elapses. Enjoy your times. Thank you.